hey everybody it is thursday march 28 2024 welcome to the only show about spartan dogs hosted by spartan dogs this is sparta msu i'm your host jason strayhorn along with my co-host cedric Irvin. Irvin. hey if you you about being a dog i mean you want to learn what it is Talk to Swerve and watch You better know it. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? If this is your first time to the show, we want to welcome you to the show. If this is not, we thank you for your loyalty. And look, let us know where you guys are. You know, that's one thing that we got. We love that. I know Woody is hanging out there in Hawaii. It's beautiful out there, sipping in Mai Tais and all that. But I know there's a lot of folks from the great state of Michigan and all over, Florida, Georgia. That's where we are. You know, I mean, look, don't forget to follow us on all of our social media fo- uh, platforms at This is Part of MSU. But Swerve, man, I, I, I got to the, the Peach State last night, and man, it was good to see you, man. Oh, man, I, I wish we could put that picture up we took, man. Somebody say we look cute together. <laughs> oh, look at that. Woo! Man. Woo! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Start barking dolls, baby. Man, look at that. Hanging out, you know, having a little cigar, a couple red cups with nothing in them, you know, a little water. Hey, a made little it home safety, so we did the job, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Man, real good seeing you. And, uh, you know, we're planning on some good things for everybody in the near future, maybe around spring game time, so we can do a little meetup or something like that for everybody. That's something that's in the work. So clear your calendars for that. Man, Swerve, we got we're gonna get into it today because you know there's a lot of championships and good sports going on around Michigan State, uh, especially with this new transfer portal NIL era. There's a lot of stuff going on about NIL and how it's impacting the game. But I'll tell you what, the NIL group, the collective, this is part of MSU, man. I mean, they only had you know, they sponsor a lot of the guys from hockey, they just won a Big Ten championship, all the yeah. Masters girls, you know. Had them on. They're doing a phenomenal job. Tennis, ranked in the national, you know, in, in the polls right now, doing a phenomenal job. I mean, it's just, it's a great thing. We got to highlight what they do over at Charitable Gift America, Tom Dieters and company there uh, with This is Sparta, the collective and the podcast. There they go right there for the QR code if you want to check it out and just make your. NIL gift charitable. Take this chance to take control of the NIL contributions, Swerve. Direct them. The Spartan Athletic Programs are your choice. The Business Sparta Fund, powered by Charitable Gift America, allows you to choose. And, you know, man, look, all the athletes, they get to donate 5% of their, um, their, their, their funds to a charitable organization of their choice. And we're going to talk about that today because we have a special guest on who is not only – a charitable gift America uh, athlete. He's an outstanding leader in the community, right fielder, you know, and for the MSU baseball team. And right now we're going to, you know, look at this video that Spartan Vision did. They did a phenomenal job. So roll the video if we can. He had COVID and the injury, it was like a year and a half off from playing. I honestly got to a point where I was like, okay, not playing baseball. And I realized you know, there's other things I'm good at. There's other things I can do in this world, I felt like. And I got to a point where I didn't know if I really loved playing anymore. We talked about it a little bit and I kind of helped him out with what I could, but at the same time, I mean, I didn't really know what he was going through. Play with your head up, okay? Keep your eyes up all the time. I think Coach Boss did a really good job of reeling me back in and just kind of making me feel like, you know, you're not the only person that's ever gone through this or felt like this and it just takes time. The more that they're here, the more that they have an opportunity to get settled into things and the culture of our program, the culture of the department and and the university, the the easier it gets. In the baseball world, everybody says, you get three hits out of 10, you're in the Hall of Fame, right? And I think it's really indicative of just the challenge that is baseball. It's not about one play or one at-bat or one pitch. It's really about consistency over a really long period of time. So that's what I've learned in college. And if you can show up every day and be a guy that's going to be consistent and have good at-bats and show good effort, like you don't have to hit three home runs every game and win the game. 
you got to just be there when your teammates expect you to be there. It's a process and it's definitely something you learn to live with and just the challenges of it. He's got a level head about him. He has a very good understanding of who he is and what he wants, where he's going, uh, and how to get there. And uh, very mature kid. It's a very tough game, a lot of failure, and just having him there as a person, just being like, hey, it's all right. We'll get him next time. It's baseball. Today's a good chance to beat a good team, beat your first Big Ten team, and then get rolling for next week. So let's have a good day. Be aggressive. In the fall, you know, we asked him to take more of a leadership role, and he has taken it and run with it. And uh, I think he's the unquestioned leader on our team, um, which is, you know, an awful lot of fun to watch, especially if you go back to that, you know, uh, kid that was maybe a little bit unsure of himself at 18 years old. I think with each year I gained a little bit of confidence and I think it was through playing and I think it was through just evolving as a young man. It's important to me just because I've been there and I've been uncomfortable and I think I wanted somebody to do that and now that I'm in that position, hopefully there's guys that kind of recognize like, oh, I'm glad Jack's trying to make that effort and trying to help me out and hopefully, uh, you know, in a couple of years from now they'll look back and be like, you know, I'm happy he did that. I'm happy he helped me out because that's what I wanted. And so I'm just trying to pay it forward a little bit and do what I can. Jack has helped me on the field in a way that where I tend to struggle is like just getting too down on myself and having Jack, who's this upbeat guy, just at home after a game, we're just talking, he's making me laugh and kind of just forgetting about what happened so that the next day, next game, we can go into it with a clear mind. He will turn it on when he has to, and then he will be a goof when he doesn't have to. So I think that's a great quality that he has. He's doing a fantastic job of that. Stepping up, leading, he's doing amazing. We had a guy on the team last year, Wyatt Rush, who day one he said, my role as like a fifth year player is, I just wanna leave the program better than it was at the beginning. So that's kind of the same thing that I've taken on. And we're in a good place, but let's keep getting to a better place and a better place. Great video right there, man. And I swear, without further ado, let's welcome on Michigan State baseball right fielder Jack Frank, who joins us part of MSU. Jack, hello, hello. How are you doing? Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's weird watching that video of yourself. It's a, it's a weird feeling, but it's a great video. It, I, you know. Put a lot of work into it. Nah, not, it was good. Now for me, Jack, I watch all my videos all the time. <laughs> I watch all my videos all the time. I, I just love Maybe watching it. me, Jack. Well, I, I said to my parents, I was like, I don't really even want to do this. I'm not, I don't love being on the camera and stuff. So I said, you know, I don't want to do this, but I think when I'm older, I'll appreciate that I did it and I'll be able to show my family and watch it when I'm older. So really happy, you know, how it turned out and got to do it. But it is a little bit weird watching yourself and then, and then like, I made it like a week ago, so I'm like, this is just a kind of funny feeling, but great. I, they did a great job. Yeah. Hey, Jack, I got three questions before you start, uh, Straight, because I saw some things in the video that I got to address, right? Okay. For one, you know, the football team got coach. You know, we got new coaches. And uh, I saw you steal second, so that means you got a burst. You know yeah. what I mean? And then I just saw the catch that you caught at the fence. See, I used to make that catch with one hand and put my other hand in the air and wave to my mom. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. You, so that showed me you had hand and eye coordination, right? Yes. So all I'm saying is, you know, once you finish baseball, <laughs> you know, we need you in a slot receiver. Well, we're going to take care of you. That's one. <laughs> okay. Number two is you got a little soul to you. I saw you dancing and moving around. And, you know, it, it, it yeah. wasn't the, it wasn't the really offbeat kind of dance. So I I you got dance move. My last thing is, was that a real squirrel in that picture? No. Oh, <laughs> no. <okay. laughs> All right. You can start the show okay. now, straight. My bad. I had to ask that. I'm sorry. All right, I'll, I'll comment. Well, so the first one, I was not very good at football. I'm a huge football fan. Um, I'm from Cleveland, Ohio, so. Browns fan, 
through the good and the bad and Ooh. watching every play of the 0 16. But so huge fan. I was never that good for whatever reason. I, I don't know why, but um, I have definitely exhausted my uh, eligibility. I fifth year here. I there is no way they could find me any more time on the college sports avenue. So unfortunately, I wish I could, but I've definitely exhausted that. Um, the squirrel is not real. I sent that in because I it was a funny thing, and um, the f- story behind it is I had been telling our trainer at the time, who uh, our athletic trainer, I was telling him, yeah, we we kind of like found this squirrel and we're raising it in our dorm, right? <laughs> so we made that picture and we like photoshopped it on there and sent it to him, and he believed it for like a little bit. So <laughs> that's the story behind it. I was surprised they used it when I watched it. My roommate texted me and he's like, they put that picture with the squirrel in there. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. It was funny. I couldn't believe that. So no, it, funny <laughs> story. Could not believe it came back around. But the football avenue, I, I got some of the attributes, but for whatever reason, it never clicked. I don't know why, but it never Ball's did. Ball's too big. I mean, you just like the smaller ones. So, I mean, that, that takes mean, more hand I can barely ball. throw a football. Pause. You got to say pause when you say the ball's too big. Come on, straight pause. I know we got the young kids, so they keep us up. Yeah. Oh, oh, now right. they're saying right. no diddy. No diddy. No diddy. No, no diddy. I just heard about that the other day. <laughs> Man, no diddy. <laughs> no diddy. Not no diggity. No diddy. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, you know, you talked about now you know, being comfortable watching yourself here and thinking about how it would be for you personally watching this video in the future when you're, you know, an older guy and all that, like us sitting back. Uh, you may not want to watch this on continuous loop like Swerve watches his self, right. but the people out there that see this message from you and get something out of it, because you talk about a lot of things about being uncomfortable and be in the inner growth that you've experienced. You know, talk about that, like how that, story can impact and is impacting a lot of athletes and students across the country, no matter what sport they're in, because let me tell you something, there's a secret. Everybody feels how you felt coming in. Maybe not Swerve, but most people feel that way, you know, when they're transitioning into college. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think the people that don't feel that way are, you know, the elite of the elite and kind of make things Things kind of just tick a little bit different. We've had guys on the team that, you know, it didn't bother them. But at the end of the day, I think there's struggles that everybody has with college. And whether you want to admit it or you're willing to admit it or you're just pretending like it doesn't exist, I think it's still there. So, I mean, the message to me was honestly, and I said this in it a couple times, I don't think it made it in the video, but like my story is not, you know, unique really in any way. It's not something that is different than a lot of people's. It's just that I'm willing to talk about it because I feel like, you know, I've learned a lot over the time and I feel like it can help some of the younger guys. So everybody gets to school and that, you know, they wish their mom was making them dinner and they wish their mom was doing their laundry and they don't want to go to class. And so, you know, that combination of stuff is challenging in and of itself. Um, But I really feel like if you talk about it, then it, it, it might be able to help somebody. So that was the whole point. Um, you know, I don't consider myself like some great leader or somebody who I tell the guys all the time, like, you know, I don't know exactly what I'm doing, but I'm just trying my best to help you guys and try to help you where I can. Um, because that's at the end of the day, that's all I can do. I don't know exactly what I'm doing. Like I said, so it was important to me that I'm able to share that with a lot of people. Cause I, I think a lot of guys, and I think I definitely, men and athletic men try to ignore like you know I don't feel good right now I don't feel accepted on this team that's I think that's a thing a lot of people run away from so I think uh me being able to say it while it's not comfortable um it might help somebody so I just wanted to get that out there and I'm, I'm glad they asked me to do the story I uh was shocked but I'm glad they asked <laughs> Without question. I mean, said you, you remember back, you know, when we played, we trans you guys were transitioning, you had some freshmen that came in with you that had a tough time dealing with it. Some guys couldn't even make it through the first camp. You know, I think one of the things that Jack has been able to show is that it's the perseverance in spite of facing that challenge. Like, what do you would you agree? 
Say it. Oh, I totally, I totally agree. You know, because you got to think you're making a big step. You know, and, and especially when you're making a step and you come in with a name. You was the man in the high school. You know, you you was the prom king and and all those things. And when you get to college, you you in this big campus. Now you're just a number. You know, so sometimes your confidence can can go down. You know what I mean? Because you don't know. It's the what if. You got to think. You you were this big time athlete in high school where you just woke up in the morning. You knew you was going to do what you were going to do. But now I get to college and now around this big campus and around better, more, more athletes. And I got high expectations of myself. Sometimes you put so much pressure on yourself that you can't perform. You, you know what I mean? Yeah. But I say that to, to those. Like for me, Jack, I came in with the right mouth ready. I was, I was a superstar soon. I stepped on the field. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it ain't about me, Jack. It's your time right now. No. Like I said, that is that's like people that can do that, I applaud you. You know, we've had some guys where you could tell like they're not phased by stuff. And I think that's, you know, the elite of the elite. And then people like me, you gotta kind of learn how to at least fake it or learn mm-hmm. how to do it better. So it's very valuable skill, I think. But um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people go through it. I think, you know, when I came in, because the one thing that stood out about a guy like Cedric, I was here, I think, two years before you got here to Michigan State, said, and it was your ability to practice with enthusiasm. And lo- most guys, you know, you come out of high school, right? In high school, you're just better than everyone else. You feel like you're more of a gamer. And you realize mm-hmm. in college, you can't just be a gamer. You know what I mean? When you say gamer, just yeah. you just kind of go through you know practice, it. go through the motions of the practice and show up and ball out in the games. It doesn't work like that on this level or beyond. Yeah. You have to practice with high intentions. And when you when you think about your transition from Strongville, Ohio, you know, coming <laughs> out of Cleveland, you know, you, you had a twin sisters. That, that was something that I didn't know. Uh, you know, obviously had a, you have an older brother as well back at home. Yeah. You know, how was that being away from a twin for the first time? Uh, I, I do think it's funny. My coach mentioned that. I was surprised when he said that. But, you know, I think that's another thing where at the time I didn't think it was a big deal. You know, whatever. I'm going to college like everybody else. But I think the thing with my twin sister is just it was always somebody right next to me that knew exactly what I was going through. We had, you know, all the same experiences. So at the end of the day, me and her were not like – siblings where we're arguing and screaming at each other like we were just friends because she's she's a little bit of a tomboy and she's been around boys her whole life so we've always just been friends so it was really just probably the comfortability of like you know now it's actually just me and I don't have the the sidekick if you will that was always there um and I didn't think it was gonna be an issue I was like oh whatever she's going to college I'm going to college and that's just life um but I think at the end of the day yeah I mean it was a little bit different and uh you know, now we're used to it and we're adults, but um, at the time it was a little bit different for sure. I think when you've grown up with somebody the whole time and then suddenly you're on your own. Yeah. Things change a little bit. You know, I said, I'm not going to say names, but there's been some athletes at Michigan state, maybe some on the football team that showed up with binkies, <laughs> comfort blankets in college. So look, so I mean, a twin sister, I can understand that. I, you know, it, it, it's a real thing, you know, having that comfort. But you had to also deal with the isolation that came with COVID after you got to campus, right? You came in in 19, 2019, is that right? Yeah, 19. Yep. So my first year on campus was that COVID year. So the fall was completely normal. And then the spring was Normal up until whatever it was, March, middle of March. Um, I think we played 15 games. Um, and I just remember we got called in the locker room. It was like, hey, we're not going to Indiana State this weekend. Um, whatever, they canceled it because something's going on in the world. So then like two hours later, they call us into the locker room and they say, we don't really know why or what's going on, but the whole season's canceled. And it was like, what are we talking about? And Everybody was nobody believed it at first. It's like, what are you talking about? But, and I'm not proud to say this. Um, my freshman year, I had just I played in the beginning, did well because everybody, you know, you come out of the gates and somehow you just play well. And then people figure you out a little bit, and I struggled for like the next five games. So 
when they called the season, I was legitimately excited. I was like, mm-hmm. you know what? This is great. I don't have to go, you know, struggle in front of everybody and like fail on this level anymore. So I was like, this is great. And I'm not proud of that. <laughs> Believe me, I felt terrible about it, um, you know, looking back. But then I saw like all the all the people around me, all the seniors who, well, I'm not going to play my last season. I just went through all the fall to play and now it's over. So guys are crying. Nobody knows what's going on. It was it was a very, very bizarre start to a college career. Um, I'm not sure anybody's going to have a, a, a start to their college like we did, but bizarre, bizarre thing. And I know everybody went through it in different ways, but it was definitely a weird way to start your college career. And then it just put like life on pause, as you guys all know, for the next year. Like I said in that in that uh, video, I ended up getting shoulder surgery, just kind of on a fluke thing. And then, you know, I went almost a year and a half without playing baseball. So it was like, I may as well have never played at this point. It feels like so long ago. So it's just a weird combination of stuff. But at the end of the day, I think, you know, that was that's just how it happened. And, you know, you can only, can only control what you can control, right? Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, when you look at being off, like baseball out of all sports is one of those sports where you really can't take time off. Like you, you, when guys right. are, you know, angels are progressing through their career. That's not typically a sport that someone could say, you know, I, you know, I just jumped in as a junior in high school and started playing. You do see that in, in some football, like some basketball players may play it yeah. late in their life and, and transition and make it to the Hall of Fame some, in some cases. But baseball is not one of those because, you know, you, you got to adjust to the speed of the pitches and all those things that go along with baseball. So for you to be able to overcome that, being off that long, is a huge thing. Now, to baseball now, look at where you guys are now. I mean, you just had a dominating performance a couple of – like last week against Michigan, right? Uh, Monday – what? Tuesday. Dude, just a couple days is. ago. It was two days ago. Yeah, yeah. Two Man, days. hey, time is flying for me. 16 Lazy. to 6, is that what it was? Yeah, and it should have been a lot worse. Yeah. It should have been a lot worse. <laughs> I'm going to be honest. It, I don't even think the score is indicative of what the game looked like if you were there. Oh, hold, really? on, hold, on, hold on, hold on, Jack. You say indic- indicative? Indicative. <laughs> we had to slow it down. <laughs> indicative. Indicative. <laughs> yes. First- but you know, Here, good job. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Your parents did a good job. Now, so <laughs> let's talk about that game because we all love talk love to talk about playing against and especially beating school down the road. So, how yeah. was that? How'd that feel? Well, I think in baseball, man, it's a lot different than like football and some of these other sports. You know, there's so much hype in football, and you know, one game is so much of your season that it can change everything. And like you guys with the rivalries, it's different in baseball because we play them. We're going to play them another three times. So it's not like, you know, we're throwing a party. Like we, we beat them once because you play them again at the end of the day, it's only one out of the four times. So that game to me in and of itself is we just try to play the same way our version of baseball, every game, regardless of if it's, you know, the best team in the country or the worst school you've ever played. Like in baseball, if you and in any sport, if you just play the way that you play, then most times you're gonna win, right? So it was a combination of things went our way. Um, I don't think they really wanted to be there as much as we did, and uh, we kind of just poured it on them inning after inning after inning, and they did not uh, have their best day, I'll say. But honestly, in baseball, that happens. You know, whether you lose by ten or fifteen or two, like to me, you still lost, and in baseball, that's that's one of the biggest skills compared to other sports is, you know, you're going to play again the next day. So if you hold on to something for too long, then it can drag you down and it can lead into the next game. You know, football, you got a, you got a couple days to think about it, learn from it. And it's like, you know, we played Tuesday, beat the crap out of Michigan. And then we played 24 hours later against Oakland. So you can't hold on to stuff very long in baseball. And that's one of the different skills for sure. So enjoyed it it was fun um we have played michigan i feel like a million times while i've been here so every win's good um and every win against michigan is a little bit sweeter but you know we got three more so like people say job's not finished but at the end of the day 
every baseball game to me is just another baseball game. But you know, when we're when we're in the parking lot singing the fight song in Ann Arbor, yeah, that's that's a little bit better. I will admit. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, look, and, and with that, like, so from personal accolades too. Said talked about your burst. He talked about you getting the second base. He saw that because he's got right. Burst, right now. You have you you've been moving up the charts for the stolen bases in Michigan State history, right? It will, yeah, no apparently that, that started off as a like a funny joke on the team. The team would be like, "Oh, look at that! Jack Frank has moved into fifty seventh place, a ten way tie for fifty seventh place." And I'm like, <laughs> "Dude, I don't know. Like everybody, everybody apparently has like thirty something steals or whatever." But honestly, I had no idea. I just kind of. There was a time where that was like not part of my game at all. Um, and it's definitely one of the little things I learned um, because it's not really as much about the speed. It's more about understanding the pitchers and blah, 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 boring baseball stuff, but understanding when you can run in, in um, good situations. But I don't know. I try not to pay attention to that stuff. If I get tagged in all the tweets and stuff, so it's not possible to ignore it, but it's like, <laughs> Does, do I really care that I moved into a 15-way tie in 20th place? No, it doesn't really matter. But it is still cool because now I top ten. Come I on. saw Cam Gibson, which I know can't who Cam Gibson is. So that's cool. I mean, he's a he was a great player. Got drafted by the Tigers. So yeah, that's cool. But it started off as a funny joke within the team. Like, congrats, man, 25th place. I'm like, <laughs> 25th place. Now before. Before we let you go here, we got to talk about your, your charitable giving because, you know, obviously Charitable Gift America, this is part of the collective as mm -hmm. you contract as one of their athletes for NIL. Yep. And with them, you give uh, a 5% give back to a, a charitable organization of your choice. Who have you chosen uh, to give to and why? Yeah, so I, I chose a charity called Family Nurturing Center. So a little bit of the backstory behind that is – I actually, unlike most baseball players, I had an internship in the summer at an insurance company. Um, and we kind of had this, you know, intern project of trying to fundraise for a local charity. And we stumbled onto this one. And ultimately, we got to go to the facility and tour it and meet the people who actually run the facility. So just being there and trying to learn, you know, what is their mission? And they're, a, you know, they're a charity that supports children and families in general that have been subject to abuse. So the thing that really stood out to me was, you know, none of this is like court mandated. It's, I want to have a better relationship with my kid, or I want to be better at how I ex express my emotions. So people that really just wanted to have better family relationships and nobody's making them go and nobody's doing this or that. So that was really interesting to me and cool to me. And then hearing from the people that set up the programs and believe in what they're doing and spend their whole life um, trying to make a better um, relationship in, in people's families. I just thought it was a great opportunity. Um, and it was something that I had firsthand experience with. Uh, I know a lot of times, you know, Red Cross and all these huge organizations, I don't know anything specifically um, or anybody specifically in those organizations. So this was something that was close to me, close to my heart. I had actually been there and seen it. So Felt really um, good being able to give back a little bit. I didn't – when they called me about the NIL thing, I, I was like, NIL? But you know I'm on the baseball team, right? So <laughs> – well, there you <laughs> are right the there. Of, at the end of the day, yeah. So that's what it was. Um, yeah, most people don't do internships during the summer, um, and it's something I had to work out with my coaches. But part of that thing with COVID was, you know, I had to learn to – prepare myself for after baseball. Cause you know, I'm not going to play baseball forever. And I think that's a hard thing that you got to realize at some point. So um, like I said, when they asked me about NIL, I was like, NIL, I mean, yeah, I'd love to help out and do it any way I can, but I'm like, do you have the right phone number? So no, it was, it was a great opportunity. Tom has been a, you know, a great person to learn from and just be around. And I'm so happy he gave me that opportunity, but I think the, the unique part of, them having us donate back is a it's a great thing and just a great lesson for all athletes because I think a lot of athletes are going to be really successful and if you can kind of ingrain that into us now I think it's going to be really natural when we've all kind of uh 
moved through our careers and we're able to give back a little bit more. Uh, I think this is a great starting point. Well, it's a beautiful thing, man. You know, really Absolutely. do like the mission that, you know, obviously Charitable Get to America does, but then people like you being ambassadors for them, MSU as a whole is right. a phenomenal thing, man. I'll tell you what, you know, you've talked a little bit about like how to build culture. I think that your example, your daily example is, is what culture is all about at Michigan State and how to build a great organization, be it on the field or off the field. Swear, what do you right. think about his ability to be a, a leader in this uh, great United States of America in the future here? So now since he's he in the giving mood, Jack, I, I, I saw the turf shoes you guys had on, a size 13. And I need a fitted hat. I'm gonna see my address in a minute. Then get me a jersey. It looked, me a jersey. It looked like that that picture you guys took yesterday. That looked like a baseball hat, was it not? Right. That's old. That's old. Okay, I mean, so you need a fresh one. Okay. Sign, sign the inside of it. Okay. <laughs> wow. It looks good still, even if it's old. Just sign the inside. Jack okay. 21. You know okay. what I mean? Yes, going to give him old, man. You know, baby. <laughs> It's a pleasure Such talking a to you, man. I'm a, I'm a fan. I'm a, now I'm going to watch baseball. Please. please <laughs> now I'm watching baseball because of Jack, baby. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Man, definitely. We appreciate you coming on the show, Jack. Don't be a stranger, man. And Absolutely. we'll be watching you this season as you move up the charts now. You know, not in 57th place. You're going to be in top five here soon. <laughs> right. Right. No, <laughs> thank you, guys. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun. Uh, really good time being on here. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right, man. Appreciate it. Jack Amen. Frank, MSU baseball. Man, I'll tell you what, now that that's a phenomenal young man right there. Great story. Yeah, great story. And I mean, it's a, a testament to a lot of kids out there that are looking at that. Maybe that haven't even, you know, gotten to the college level, but this is something now with the media and the, this social media and you know, being on YouTube forever and all these videos. So people can always drive back to that. The mental health aspect, which is a very hot topic right now. This is what you got to do. Now everybody's not like Swerve. You know, you know, you came nah. in. I ain't gonna lie. Now you, you, yeah, I don't know how you did it, but man, you, you had a different mental makeup from a lot of people. How did you do that? It, it, it's funny, straight, because I was gonna say, you know, we we had a, a teammate that I feel like we didn't know anything about mental health back then. I know I did. No, but now didn't. looking back at, you know, we had an athlete. I mean, a teammate, former brother who eventually had some mental health issues. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? And I look back at it now being being older saying like how could someone could have grabbed him earlier? Because mm -hmm. we saw examples. You know, you you probably more closer than, than you met him before me, but you saw examples throughout this career in college. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I want to know like how could you grab someone early to really control those mental habits you know what i'm mm -hmm. saying because at the end of the day it's all about choices and decisions in life but how do we help those who we feel like got mental health problems make better choices and decisions yes yeah it's hands on you know mm -hmm. because like 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 jack said you know you come in being a being an alpha male all this test charge, you don't want to say you got issues or you got problems Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then a lot of times coaches don't make themselves available to for you to talk to them. Some players feel like they can't talk to some coaches about certain things. You know what I'm saying? That's true. And then do you yeah. have the courage, do you have the courage to talk to someone your age about your problem or what right. you're going through? You know what I'm saying? So I think that takes a lot, man. And I think all that build up to having mental health problems because you got to get it out. You got to. You absolutely do. And that's one thing that you see now across the country. They have these areas outside the training room where they're bringing in professionals that can that are there and you can set appointments with them uh, so you can talk, you know, and um, kind of work through some issues. Because, as you said, you've tried, you can't keep that stuff bottled in and it isn't taboo. It shouldn't be taboo for anybody that is struggling because I think everybody has a little of that self-doubt. I mean, I don't know. Swerve. I mean. When, when you know when when the music stops and everything, I don't know when you was running around on campus, running running through everybody on the practice field and scoring four touchdowns against Purdue in your first game. I mean, that, was there a little doubt somewhere? Little? No, no, straight. No doubt. <laughs> but guess what? 
being in a marriage for 10 years and having two kids, boy, I got a whole lot of doubt. I need to Oh, my somebody. goodness. It hit you. It finally caught up to you, right? <laughs> <laughs> I need to talk to Jesus, Allah, anybody. I need some help, man. <laughs> right. You know, well, speaking of football, man, we got to do a little spring football update in a second here after these messages from our friends over at IHOP. IHOP has tons of omelets, so you can have omelets for breakfast, brunch, brinner, or even a brittle of the night snack. Try the new meaty, cheesy, and crispy mega omelet and add cinnamon dippers for a dollar, only at IHOP. Adding cinnamon dippers for a dollar. That's for a dollar. Man, hey, they're keeping America fat, ain't they? As soon as we finish this, I'm going over there for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> you got to keep it in that budget. You know, we done learned that, man. But look, word on the street with Michigan State football. There's a little update for you guys. So we've been putting our ear to the street and understanding what's going on in practice. Michigan State is entering their fifth practice. They had it today. Uh, on Thursday here. Uh, but one thing that stood out to everybody is that linebacker room. Uh, they said this is probably one of the best linebacker rooms where they've seen ever, maybe ever at Michigan State. You got Cal Halliday, Darius Snow, and then the newcomer, right, Jordan Hall. But the addition of Wayne Matthews III out of Old Dominion and Jordan Turner from Wisconsin, they said they turned a lot of heads to practice. Ooh, ooh. Hey, that's where it started in practice. Yeah. If you, if you got a good linebacker room and they making plays, that's telling us we got good guys up front too. Mm -hmm. Linebackers only make plays if you dominate up front. That's right. You know what I mean? So if linebackers running around and, and running sideline to sideline and and getting tackled for loss, that means them big guys up, up front doing the job. And, and that, that's a good thing to, to have. I mean, to talk about the guys up front, you got Chris Bogle back, Simeon Barrow. Now, that look, I can't believe it. he still got eligibility. Now, you know, because of that, I love the chance. I would love to be a linebacker behind that. And, you know, don't don't mention Jalen Thompson, Ken Talley, and big Derek Harmon. Hey man, <laughs> hey, swear you might want to hey, change sides. Why you gonna get over there that linebacker side, running back? Hey, them guys from Morgan State walked into a good situation. They can put it all together. You know what I mean? Yeah, they really did. They, they really, really did. I'm, I'm excited to see what that defense, especially, is going to be able to do. You talked about a defensive lineman. The newcomer on the defense that's been turned ahead is Quinn Darius Dunning Dunningan. You know, this is a guy that he measures what 6'4, 270, but they say his wingspan is like a guy that's over seven foot. So, I mean, look, you know, when you got long arms, man, as an offensive lineman, it's hard, it's hard to control a guy if you can't get to his body. Yep. Yes, sir. We need it. We need it, baby. We need it. We need it. <laughs> we need it. I can't wait till the 20th to see those guys perform, man. Oh, man. You know, we got that. And then now everybody wants to talk about number two. And number two, we talking about Aiden Childs. So the good, the feedback that we're hearing on Aiden is like, you know, one thing that, that may not sound like a big deal, which is a huge deal. You know this being in the huddle is his command of the huddle and the offense. His cadence is pro-like. And he's saying you can hear him, his cadence across the street. You know, so he's in the huddle. Man, I, there's nothing worse than a quarterback that you can't hear in the huddle. Right. And and also what that means is he's speaking with confidence. And, and that and that can be contagious in that huddle too. You know, if, if your quarterback speaking with confidence and he walking with confidence and he playing with confidence, that can trigger down to everyone else. And I was reading about him, you know, coming over here with the coach, that's big too. Cause now you don't have to learn a new offense. You already know the offense. You just got to go out and perform, and act like you've been there before. And and so far in the spring, that's what he's been doing. That's right. I mean, you got him. He came over from Oregon State, and he brought a tight end, Jack Belling. I mean, that guy. You know, this is the offense that is is tailor made. They're gonna have a lot of packages, but they're gonna have personnel at twelve, and you know, 
sometimes 13, where they only have three tight ends in the game. He's a guy that they said is catching everything. He understands the offense. He's very comfortable. And, and look at the positions that came over. So you got a quarterback who knows the, 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 the offense, a tight end that's locked in already. And I believe they had a an offensive lineman. I think the position is a center, man. You know, the center came over here. Uh, Tanner Miller he came over from Valencia, California. He came over from Oregon State, too. And they said, you know, he's not the biggest guy. But in those positions, center, quarterback, and then you have one of the guys in the, you know, he's a tight end. He's not a receiver. But they can be coaches on the field, right? They can tell the other guys, like, hey, this is how, this is what this play is supposed to look like. You know, because coaches coach in a certain way. But sometimes some players needed to be translated in their length. So they understand it a little better. So that's always a positive. Huh, Swerve? Oh, it's the plus. It's the plus. Especially, you know, you got to think, when you have a center that knows the offense, he's the quarterback to, uh, as well. He got to make the line call. He got to call out the mic. He got to talk down the line this way, that way. So he's a quarterback too. And if, if, if he can get those guys on one accord and don't have to think while you play, go out there and make plays, baby. That's what it's all about, man. I mean, we are very excited to see, you know, the first scrimmage is going to be coming up here in a couple of days. You know, that's something that, you know, typically is closed to the media. But, you know, we ain't media, man. We're we ah. a little different than that. You know what I mean? We can get in there, you know, see what's going on and, and give people, a, a, you know, shoot them straight as to what we're looking at and what we see uh, from this new team. And there's going to be a lot of positivity uh, coming this their way because they have the athletes and, I don't know, man. This Jonathan Smith, you see him, uh, he just looks like a guy that can draw up something in the sand, man, and, and, and it'll blow you away. So, Big Ten, beware of what Jonathan Smith and company going to bring. Uh, come with them X's and O's on Saturdays in the fall. Swerve, on Tuesday, man, we're going to bring one of a friend of the program, Corey Robinson from 247 Sports, will join us on Tuesday. He gives a big insight on the recruiting process, what's going on with the transfer portal. A lot of buzz happening there all over the country of people that are getting ready to get in there. That portal opens up right before spring ends here on April 15th is when the portal opens. And obviously what's going on on the inner workings, because he he's not just connected to the coaching staff or the players, but he talks to the parents and the uncles and everybody else. So you get the real from Corey Robinson. And he'll join us on Tuesday. And we're going to have some more special guests, man. We just keep him coming. And look, I can't wait until we get back to that. Swear before we roll out of here, man. Again, I can't believe it was great seeing you last night. We gonna after we get done with this visit, we probably gonna come back and do it again tonight. But we gotta plan some stuff here for the spring game, right? Hey, what I'm what I'm hoping, Stray, is that this is my picture and walk with me now because I can't run like I used to. Got bad knees, three knee surgery, but still score a lot of touchdowns. Uh -huh. <laughs> I would love to come back for the spring game, right? Mm -hmm. And we do interviews with people, talk about the history, ask them who their favorite running back or what's the favorite jersey you ever had growing up. Who their favorite center of all time. You know, sit there and do 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 a show or do some autograph, watch the spring game, and after the spring game, go around the corner, fellowship with the fans and alumni and the student bodies and some of the players just have a good old spark time. If that can happen, I'm going to pinch myself and wake up, and I have a hell of a trip to East Lansing. Oh, man. We got to make that happen. What do y'all think about that? Do you, you want Swerve and Stray to come up there and, and do exactly walk with said through that? That sounds like a good time to me. That sounds like a great time. So I'm all for a good time, Stray. I'm all for a good time. <laughs> I think they might know, but they don't really know. So we yeah. gotta get, yeah, we gotta give them the say the swerve experience. All right, man, great show today. Uh, we're gonna get out of here, man. For Cedric Irvin, I'm Jason Strayhorn. This is part of MSU. Everybody have a good night. God bless you and go. go.